ties it up. Holy Ghost is on the move. Yeah, Firebirds had a lot of momentum. Right from the jump for the Firebirds, it looked really good. Hello everyone and welcome to the campus of Holy Ghost Prep where we have live baseball action between the Holy Ghost Prep Firebirds and the Monsignor Bonner Friars. I'm Caden Stewart. I'll have a solo stream for you live from the Dwayne Athletic Complex's baseball field here on the campus of Holy Ghost Prep for about the next two hours as the Firebirds and Friars will go at it for seven innings at HGP. Both sides come in with op on opposite ends of the spectrum with Bonner coming in on a four-game win streak and the Firebirds falling three and four overall on the year on a three-game skid. HGP looks to change their momentum for this season. They'll send Matt Rendo to the mound and he will take on the Bonner starting lineup of Jackson Kehoe at third, Michael Coleman in left field, Quinn Bryan at catcher, Austin Cannon at first, Harry Carr playing DH, Ryan Friel at right field, C.J. Nocella at second base, Nick Fratangeli, the pitcher, batting eighth, and Owen Lockhart, the center fielder, batting ninth. Notable not batting is Sergio Hernandez, the starting shortstop, who'll be wearing number 12 and solely playing short in the field. For Holy Ghost, it'll be Jake Keezer starting it off at short, Tyler Burkhotter in left, Eddie Rosado in center, Joey Amati, the player of the week for the Bucks County Courier at first base in the cleanup spot, 
Matt Rendeau again on the mound and playing DH, batting fifth. Matt Baker behind the dish. Colin Davis at third. Ben McNabb rounding out the infield at second. And Matt Evans rounding out the outfield at right, uh, at in right field. The Fires will get started at the plate in just a minute, but we'll get underway when the game begins. Fibers take the field to begin this game. Leading it off for the Friars is Jackson Kehoe, the third baseman. The first pitch to him from Matt Rendo on the bump is up high and inside. And it's a quick 1-0 count to Kehoe. Second pitch is a little bit lower, but too low. It's 2-0. So again, both sides coming on opposite ends of the spectrum in this game. The Fibers on a three-game skid and the Friars on a four-game win streak. Both of their last game decided by double-digit runs of the Firebirds in a loss and Friars in a win. Rendo finds his zone for the first time today. It's a 2-1 count now to Kehoe. And the 2-1 delivery from Matt Rendo swung on and missed. And the count evens quickly at 2-2 two and two for Rendo. And before the fifth pitch of the at-bat can be delivered, Kehill will take a step off the plate. So we're having issues with connection with our home plate camera, so we hope to get that back underway before the game ends. And we will try to do that in between innings. And Rendo paints the bottom of the zone. Strikeout number one for Rendo. Kehoe disagreed and stayed in the box for a little bit, but regardless, it is strikeout number one and out, out, and out number one of this game for the Firebird defense. And this game is serving as the second rematch since the 2002 state playoff semifinal in which the Firebirds won and went on to fall in the state championship, but won their first ever Eastern state championship in school history. Bonner was a nationally ranked program that year and looked to get back to it this year. As the first pitch, the second pitch of this new at-bat to Michael Coleman, the left fielder, is taken for a ball. So 2-0 count to number 31, Michael Coleman. Third pitch is a little bit low. It's a 3-0 count now to Rendo, so Coleman can do what he wishes. Overall, Monner's offense is hitting an average of 329 on the year. So no shortage of offensive firepower through this lineup as Rendeau finds his own. That's a 3-1 count to Coleman. So all outs will be important outs for this Firebird defense as they come in with a 210 batting average, but it have put up some fight later in games. That pitch is swung on and missed, and the count now full to Rendeau, who's been able to battle back in back-to-back -back attempts now. And a 3-2 full count pitch from Rendo in the dirt. And the first base runner of the game comes by Walk. It's Michael Coleman getting to first the easy way. With Coleman's walk, there's one man on and one out, and it brings up the number three hitter, the catcher Quinn Bryant.
First pitch of the at-bat to Quinn Bryan is taken for a ball on the count 1-0 from Matt Rendeau. Number two is flied out, shallow right field. And calling it and making the catch in right is starting right fielder today, Matt Evans, the nine hitter. So the first ball put in play of the game goes to Evans, who fields it cleanly and easily. And there's two outs now with the man on first. With Brian's out, Austin Cannon comes to the plate, the first baseman. And there'll be a catcher's indifference from starting, starting catcher Matt Baker for HDP as stealing second was Michael Coleman, who reached base on a walk. So far, the only base runner of the inning for the Bonner Friars, but it's currently in scoring position with two outs. And the count 0 and 1 to Austin Cannon. Cannon swung on line drive out towards right. Evans trying to get there. He dives. Did he get it? Yeah, he yes, that. he did. Matt Evans with some hype words after the play. Makes the diving catch in right. Saves a run. And HGP goes to the bottom of the first. Scoreless at zero. Great inning by Rendeau with one strikeout and three retired. Only one walk allowed. One man left. No run score. The Firebirds coming up at 0-0. Zero, zero. With the Flyers retired on their side of the first, the Firebirds come to the plate in the bottom half. Leading it off will be Jake Kieser, the shortstop. And Kieser will face Nick Fatangeli, number 35, starting pitcher for the Friars. Kieser comes in with a 222 batting average. A total of four hits and 18 at-bats. First pitch to Kayser is called strike on the inside corner in the count 0 and 1. And the first pitch from Fat and Jelly finds his own. Kayser, the shortstop, ready for the second delivery. That one fired a little bit outside, count 1 and 1.
three of Kaiser's four hits this year have resulted in RBIs. He has three total on the year. He flies that one out towards right over near the sideline. It's going to drop in for a hit. Kaiser flying around first, going to second. He's in with a sliding double. And the first hit of the day for HGP is goes for extra bases. And it's Jake Kaiser's second extra base hit of the season. And he leads off with a double, so no outs and a man in scoring position early for the Firebirds. With Kieser on it brings up one of the top hitters, hitters for HGP, the highest batting average on the team, Tyler Bergkotter, batting 390 this year. Over 22 plate appearances, seven hits and 18 at bats. Bergkotter with three RBIs as well. And he looks to drive in a run here will be the first run of the game for either side. Batten Jelly takes a pitch up high. Keezer thought about a steal, but he'll trickle back to second. And the count one to know. So Bird Carter again batting a whopping 390 on the year. He started off the year seven for seven in home games. Since then it's slowed down just a little bit, but not enough. That one shows Bunt, lines it back to the pitcher. It was dropped by Fat and Jelly. He won't win the race to first. And saying it second was Kieser. So it'll be a ground out technically on the scorecard for Berg Cotter, and there's one gone with a man on second. That brings up the number three hitter, Eddie Rosado. Rosado starting in center field, and the first pitch to him, taking for a strike on the bottom corner. Rosado is struggling just a bit, batting 167 on the year. Three hits, but four RBI. So he has had some offensive production, again, looking to add to that total here with a man in scoring position. Rosado ready for the 1-1 from Fred and Jelly, and the pitch <laughs> taken just a bit outside. Two and one. Keys let off the game with a double, or let off the half of the inning with a double. Remains on second after the ground out by Burkhotter. And now Rosado with one out and man on second. Again, now sees a 2 1. And that one taken for strike two on the bottom corner. Two and two, the count to the 167 hitter, Eddie Rosado. Fred and Jelly checks back twice, now fires home, and that one caught Rosado. And it hits a hit by pitch for Rosado. He'll take first. And that brings up the player of the week to the Bucks County carrier, Joey Amati. Amadi, the team leader in RBIs with eight on the year. He also has one double and is batting 300 with the third highest average on the team. Amadi takes one in the dirt, took a hop before it got across home plate, and the count went early to Amadi. Fred and Jelly still searching for that elusive first strikeout. Amadi, not one that would usually give it to him. And the pitch to Amadi, sinking just a little bit high, and the count's 2 0. Keeping on Amadi's scorecard, he has eight RBIs, the one extra base hit, and two home runs. He has two of the three Firebirds total home runs on the season. Amadi awaits the 
thought about it. Swing, but it's called high. It just grazed the top of the zone. It just misgrazed the top of the zone. Three straight balls to Amadi to count 3 0, and a hitter's count from Fred and Jelly. And HGP threatening early. Two on, one out the 3 0 to Amadi. Taken for a strike, maybe a little bit inside according to Amadi, but he goes back in for a fifth pitch. And Fred and Jelly's 3 1. Take it inside for a strike. Stealing third is Kieser, and he got under the tag. And it's a double steal as Kieser steals third. Rosado steals second in their two in scoring position for Amadi, who now faces a 3 2. Fred and Jelly takes a step off the mound. We'll come back in. He's battled back from a 3 0 count. To throw two consecutive college strikes to Amadi. Amadi ready for the sixth pitch of the at bat. Swing and a miss. He got him. And it's the first strikeout of the inning for Fred and Jelly. And he gets the cleanup hitter, Amadi. Two outs and immense men on second and third for the Firebird offense and the starting pitcher, Matt Rendo. Pitching and DHing today, and that one's fouled away. As he sends it right back off a of Firebird side of the dugout. Oh, one 1 the count to Rindo. And the pitch swung on, popped up, shallow infield coming in and making the catch is the shortstop in Sergio Hernandez. So the Firebirds threaten early, but nothing comes of it. Two hits, two men left, no run score. We'll go to the second inning. It's a 0-0 game at Holy Ghost. Both sides have gone scoreless in the first. That brings up the fire second half, or first half of the second inning. Leading off for them is number 14, Harry Carr, the DH. He'll take a strike on the, or ball, sorry, on the first pitch. And it's a 1-0 count. 
as Matt Rendell obviously remains on the mound, the starter for HGP. That's a line drive over towards short. Fielded cleanly on two hops by Kieser. He throws to first. It's in time. And there's one gone in the second. One out in the second, and the second at bat states a ball down low. It's the first pitch to Ryan Friel, the right fielder. And Friel's now with a 1 0 count, waits for the second pitch from Rendeau. Upstairs, ball two. Back to back balls thrown by Rendeau. He's been able to battle back in multiple at bats, a 2 0 and 3 0 count to start each game, to start each at bat in the first inning. And was able to work a two strike count and each striking out one. There's a ground ball over towards second. Fielded cleanly by Bam McNabb. He goes to first in time. And back to back, good plays by the middle infield for HGP on defense.
Firebirds get ready for their side of the third inning. So the Firebirds get ready for their side of the third. And it's Nick Fratangeli, the pitcher on a pitcher duel as he faces Matt Rendo from the dish. 2-0 count now to Fratangeli. Three of the count now to Frat and Jelly. And that pitch from Rendo finds the bottom of the zone. It's a three and one. That one chopped back towards Rendo. It'd be easy play to first. And maybe a little bit harder than it looked. As that one just barely beating Fred and Jelly to the dish. Amadi makes the tag Amadi makes the tag on the bag, and there's one gone in the third. And the umpires will converse about it as it was a close play at first, a lot closer than what it looked like it was going to be. Fred and Jelly down on a ground out as it was confirmed on the field to be such. Owen Lockhart comes to the plate. Center fielder wearing number 30. Lockhart looking to get the first one of the game out as a ground ball over towards second. McNabb makes the play, cleanly goes to first, it's in time, and back to back ground outs for the fire of her defense. Lockhart out. We go back to the top of the order with Jackson Kehoe. Let off the game with a strikeout, and the starting third baseman comes to the dish for a second time in a rematch with Rendeau. The pitch to Kehoe upstairs. And Rendeau has gone a little bit up and in to Kehoe on the first pitch of both at bats. And the 1 0 pitch is swung on and missed for strike one. Count evens up at one apiece with two outs and no man on in the top of the third. Gio chases down low and the count now one and two after the third pitch for Rondo. Keo has been immense this year on offense. Eight hits and 17 at bats, totaling to a 471 batting average on the year. And now the 1 2 count going towards him. It'll be a catcher pitcher meetup between Rendo and Baker. Third, a pitch goes to, a throw goes to first, it's in time and caught by Amadi. One, two, three, go the Friars in the third. We go to the bottom of the third, the Firebirds and Friars still knotted up at zero.
Two and a half innings have been completed here at Holy Ghost Prep. We go to the second half of the third frame. And making his first at-bat of the game is the right fielder, Matt Evans. Evans with a first pitch line drive out towards center, backing up at the track and making the catch. Or pardon me, not making the catch, going over. Wait, no, I was right the first time he made the catch. Catch was made by Owen Lockhart, the center fielder, who tracked it down and a great defensive play as Matt Evans is robbed of extra bases in the first swing of the third inning. But Evans down, the fire bridge back to the top of the order, and Jake Keezer, the shortstop, comes to the dish. Keezer had a similar line drive, go for extra bases in his first at-bat of the game. He wound up stranded on third after a double and stolen base. First pitch to Keezer is taken for a ball, so it waits for the second delivery from Fred and Jelly. That's a ground ball through Keezer through the hole in the left side of the infield, and Keezer is two for two. Overthrow going back to the infield, but not enough for Keezer to make an advance. So a single with one out in the bottom of the third for Jake Keezer. He's two for two, and Tyler Bergcutter comes to the plate. Again, Bergkotter leads the team in batting average among players with more than three at-bats. As he bats 389 on the year, that one's lined out towards third. Diving scoop off the turf and the throw does not get there. Now they're going to discuss, was it caught? The Firebird dugout did not think it was, nor did Tyler Bergkotter, but we will see. It was ruled not caught. One out, two men on. Is this uh, is ruled a single for Tyler Bergkotter. And he shows bunt back to back at bats as time reaches base safely. Eddie Rosado with two men on now steps to the dish. Pitch down low to Rosado. First and second, one out for HGP as Keezer advances second on the ground at uh, a base hit on the ground for Bergkotter. Rosado ready to go, that one taken outside, ball two. Rosado 8-1 in his first at bat, coming back in the first inning. He provided the second base runner in the inning for HGP. And then was stranded at second. Still scoreless in the bottom of the third. That is checked back to second. Back in time was Keezer. And now Rosado back in the dish, hoping for his third opportunity of the at bat. And the 2 0 delivery to Rosado is down low inside, ball three. On deck is the ever dangerous Joey Amati, the first baseman named Player of the Week last week in the Scranton commit, batting cleanup. He looks for redemption for a strikeout earlier. Rosado, a 3 0 count, looking to give him the opportunity. Rosado ready, stealing, uh, stealing third, throw goes low, it's in time, he's out. What a throw from behind home plate by Quinn Bryan, and Keezer is out stealing third. Two outs and a man on second, but getting to second safely was Tyler Bergkotter, who stole who steals second from first. Three one count now to Rosado. And now some more pressure added in the at bat. That one taken low and it's ball four, and we're back to where we were. First and second with two outs now, as Rosado draws the walk and Amadi steps to the plate. So 
the Burt Cutter's stolen base successfully is the first successful stolen base of the game. They pitch one on line drive out towards left field. It's down base hit. Here comes Rosado. Or Rosado rounding second. He's going to get to third. Here, Burt Cutter will score. Rosado slides into third. It's an RBI single for Amadi. His team leading ninth at RBI of the season. It's 1 0 HGP in the third. RBI single for Joey Amati. Rosado gets the third. Bird Cotter scores. So with Amati is safely at top first base, that brings up the pitcher Matt Rendo, who popped out his first time up, which ended the first inning. First throw of the at bat goes home to Rosado or to uh, Rendo. That's called for a strike to count 0 and 1 to Matt Rendo. Rendo ready in the pitch, chops foul off the dugout on the Firebird side and out of play. Owen to the count early to Matt Rendo. And the pitch up the stairs. This is ball one of the at bat. Rendo looking to battle back. The one two pitch swinging and chopped foul off the plate and goes behind Rendo and the count stays one and two. And the pitch goes home, chased by Rendo. The ball was not able to be caught. The throw to first is in time. So Rendo unable to beat the drop third strike, but a run does score in the inning off the RBI single by Joey Amati. It's a 1-0 Firebird lead through three. We go to the fourth for the Friars and Michael Coleman leading it off. Through three innings of play, only one run has graced the scoreboard, but the Firebirds will benefit from it. It's a 1-0 HGP lead through three innings. 
And we come to the first half of the fourth with the Bonner Friars at the dish and Michael Coleman at the plate. First pitch is taken in for a strike by Coleman. And Rendon now delivers the 0-1, swing and a miss. So Coleman down to or sorry, yeah, Coleman down 0-2 early, both back-to-back -back pitches for strikes. And Rendon looking for his third strike out of the game. Coleman would be a big out, batting 4-12, seven hits in 17 at-bats. There's a ground ball foul by the broadcast booth. Leave it, leave it. And we'll have a dugout representative come out and get the ball. The fritz from Rendo is a line drive, base hit back up the middle. And Michael Coleman has reached base safely in both at bats. He's one for one after the walk. And there's a man on first with nobody out early. Coleman reaches safely, so Quinn Bryan comes to the plate. Bryan is over one with a fly out in the first. Starting catcher batting third, back to first goes Coleman after his leadoff single in this fourth inning. Quinn Bryan will be even bigger out with his six hits in 14 at bats. He's batting 429. Coleman batting 412 on first. Coleman now steals, popped up by Quinn Bryan. Out towards center, tracking it down and making the catch is Eddie Rosado, and there's one out. One out and a man on first for this Firebird defense. Eddie Rosado gets credit for the defensive play to get the first out. And so Austin Cannon, the cleanup hitter at the dish. Cannon, by far the best hitter on this Bonner team. Eight hits in 14 at-bats, a whopping 571 batting average for these Bonner Friars. And pick off attempt at first, comes up empty as Michael Coleman barely got back in time. Rendeau and Amadi thought it was promising. And that would just be one more thing to add to Amadi's resume of the game. They try it again, that one a little bit more offline. And so Rendeau 0 for 3 on pickoff attempts in this inning. Austin Cannon still waiting for the first pitch of his at bat. And a throw home, Cannon line drive, right field by the foul line. It is just on the wrong side of it. 0 1 the count now to Cannon as that one just barely dropped past the foul line. We'll try for the third time with Michael Coleman at first. Once again, comes up empty. And so with four throws this at bat, it's only a 0-1 count. Cannon the 571 hitter waiting for the second pitch, and he's going to eat that one. And there's first and second with one out as that one caught Cannon on the inside. And he takes a hit by pitch. The second batter to be hit by a pitch today, one from either side. It was Rosado for HGP. Now it's the left-hander Harry Carr at the dish. First and second, one out in the top of the fourth. HGP looking to nurse that 1-0 lead that they just earned in the previous half inning. The pitch for Rendell is popped up, shortstop and caught by Jake Keezer. Two outs, is that one a quick retiring of Harry Carr? So 
car is going car is going for one pitch and that brings up Ryan Friel. Friel batting 333, five hits and 15 at bats. He's 0 for 1 on the day. Now the runner obviously able to advance on that pop fly. So first and second, two outs. And here's Friel waiting for the first pitch from Rendo. That one taken for a strike on the inside corner. It's 0 and 1. Amadi won't hold on Cannon. Rendo takes down low. That one's going to get away from Baker. And both runners will advance. The throw goes to second, but it's offline. Brought back in by Kieser. So double steal, second and third with two outs. And some more pressure applied to Ryan Friel. Doe swung on and missed in the count one and two. Riel with two in the scoring position, down in the count one two. Rendo hoping to work out of the jam here in the fourth. He righties on the bump. And the one two delivery from Rendo swung on, chopped over to second, fielded by McNabb. The quick throw to second is not in time as there was no force at second. And it's an RBI single for Ryan Friel. We're tied at one. Regardless, it's a great job by McNabb to save the run. He had no play at first as Friel with speed would have gotten their way on time. So a smart play to go to second by McNabb and that keeps the game one and one. That brings up CJ Nocella, hoping to see his first hit of the season. Catcher's indifference by Baker as advancing the second was Friel. Rosella 0 for 1 with a strikeout. And a slow start for him as he is now 0 for 13 on the season. That one fouled away and the count evens up at 1 and 1. Second and third, two outs to the Firebird defense in the fourth. Rendo fires the 1-1. One -one. Swung on line drive past McNabb into center field. It'll score one. Held up at third is Friel. RBI single for CJ Nocella and a great job by him to break loose of his slump. First hit of the season, first RBI of the season. It is a 2-1 lead for the Bonner Friars. Now bringing about a mound visit for Rendo. We'll take a break real quick. It is a 2-1 lead. Men on the corners and two outs in the fourth. Rendo will stay in the game and he will now face a new test in Nick Frattangeli. Frattangeli grounded out his first time up. Another pitcher duel, the second of the game between these two. Going to second was Nocella, but Nocella slowed up too early. He was caught in a rundown. Now the throw to home. Kayser, did he get him? He did. Kayser fires home, gets the play. Nocella, a good strategy to draw the rundown, but just not well enough to score the run. 
Damage is done though for the Friars. Two runs score in their side of the fourth. The Firebirds just scored their first in the last inning. Look to answer once more. They are down two to one going to the bottom of the fourth. We went to the bottom of the fourth for HGP. They trail two to one from the Bayern Monarch Friars. Leading off for them will be Matt Baker, the catcher, who's over one with a strikeout. Currently ahead in the count 2 0. Pitch on Baker is a third at ball of the at bat. Three of the count now to him. Baker, the starting catcher, ready to go. And the pitch finds the bottom of the zone. Strike one. Baker again batting .053 on the year. And that one taken upstairs. So Baker works his fourth walk of the season. And he's reached base for the first time tonight. 2-1 ball game for Bonner. Uh, bring about a pitcher's vi or mound visit. And a pitching change, it appears, for the Bonner Friars. Nick Frantangeli with a great outing today for Bonner, but he will come off in the bottom of the fourth. He goes three full innings, three strikeouts, only allows one earned run, so a solid outing for him. And the new pitcher in the game will be... Number, number seven in Jack Redding. Redding comes on in relief of Fright and Jelly. We'll give him a second to get used to the mound. Then we come back in the bottom of the fourth with a man on first and nobody out.
Firebirds trail by one here in the bottom of the fourth due to one to Bonner. And Bonner with their first pitching change of the game in the first for either side. They take out Nick Frattingelli, who had three strikeouts today, and they put in Jack Redding. Pinch running for Matt Baker, starting catcher, is Farrell. And Farrell will go to first. One on one the count now to the new batter and Colin Davis, the third baseman for the Firebirds, who's 0 for 1 with the strikeout. Davis batting 111 on the year with four walks in addition. He has scored four runs as well. Farrell gets to score his first, but he has not had many at bats, only three total. The pitch is a line drive, base hits her right. Farrell will advance to second and now makes a turn to third. Farrell looking to get there standing up. The throw, the tag, he is safe. The tag was not applied. But Farrell just barely legging out the potential tag by third baseman Jackson Kehoe. And they're right on the corners with a base hit for Colin Davis. And that brings up Bam McNabb with men on the corners and nobody out in this fourth. Nab a 267 hitter overall. He had a pop out in his first at bat. Jack Redding has allowed two base runners looking to stop the bleeding here in the fourth. First pitch on McNabb is inside. And the one on delivery from Redding. That one a little bit more towards the plate. It's one and one. Farrell, the pinch runner on third. Davis after the single, he's on first. And there's still nobody gone. McNabb with a 1-1. Swung on a line drive out towards left field. He's going to hit the gap and is down for a base hit. Farrell scores. Here comes Davis around second. He's down to third safely. Bam McNabb with an RBI stand up double. The Firebirds have tied the game in the second. And a sledgehammer slam at second base to Selly. 2-2 your score in the fourth. Rough start for Jack Redding, who's allowed two hits now in a row. And that brings up the number nine hitter, Matt Evans. Second and third, nobody out towards Evans. The first pitch of his at bat is too low. That's ball one. That RBI double by Bam McNabb tying the game up at two. Answering a two-run third inning for Bon or two-run fourth inning for Bonner. That one cut on and missed by Evans. Evans again, the right fielder, enters the game 0 for 1 on the day. He has a 2.11 overall batting average with that. Eight runs scored. He leads the team in runs scored. He has four hits and 19 at bats. That one swung on and missed. The 27 was for plate appearances. Evans has one RBI on the year and one extra base hit, which resulted in that RBI. So Evans with an opportunity to pad the stat sheet. That one high. Two and two to Mevins. The two and two, that one chopped over towards third. Fielded cleanly. The bait does not work. Evans is thrown out at first. Neither runner can advance. But a good effort there by Colin Davis to at least try to draw a throw. So second and third, one out now as Evans grounds out. And we're back to the top of the order and Jake Keys are the shortstop. Keys are ready. That one eat him, he did. Keyser is caught in the shoulder with the pitch, a second hit by pitch for the Firebirds today. And that loads the bases with just one out in the bottom of the fourth. 
golden opportunity for HGP. So Kieser has reached base safely in all three of his at-bats. He's two for two on the stat sheet with a single, double, and a hit by pitch. And he's now one of three Firebirds on the bases. And Tyler Birdcotter, the number one hitter for the Firebirds based on average, comes to the plate. Cutter leads the team in batting average with 389 and on base percentage with 500. That one chopped back towards the mound. Fielded cleanly, the throw goes home, it's in time. But that will be the only out. So five versus exchange base runners as Davis is out at the plate. But Berg Cotter will advance the first safely on the fielder's choice. Two outs in the base is loaded for Eddie Rosado. Even though Redding's had a rough go of it so far on the mound for Bonner, if he gets this out, that would be a huge save for him, only allowing one run. Bases juice, two outs for Eddie Rosado, who has reached base the hard way and the easy way with a hit by pitch and a walk. First pitch to him in this third opportunity goes down low, it's ball one. Rosado this season, a 167 hitter. Three runs scored. And he sees a 1 1 pitch on the way from Redding. Redding ready to 1 1, swung on chop back towards first, so stay fair, and that will end the inning. The Firebirds threaten, and one run comes of it, but all they can do is tie it up at two with a 2 2 game to the fifth, and the Friars coming back up on offense. Matt Rendeau will begin the fifth inning on the mounds. The Friars look to score in their first half of said fifth. At the plate is Nick Frattangelli, who was robbed of a third opportunity or second opportunity against Rendeau earlier on as Nocella was picked off on a rundown. First two pitches to him don't find the zone, so it's a 2-0 count. Frattangelli was just pulled off the mound, so three strikeouts for him on the day. That pitch upstairs, 3-0 count. And 
The pitch from Rendo, that one called for ball four. So a four pitch walk for Rendo to begin the fifth inning. Advancing the first is Jack Reddick, who after Fried and Jelly was pulled, is batting for him. So Redding draws the wall, he advances to first, but he'll be pinch run. As now the pinch runner, it will be Joey Graziani. And we'll now have a pitching change for HGP. Graziani will take first when we come back. Justin Lucas to enter the mound for HGP, relieving Rendo of his duties today. foul and away. So that bunt comes from Owen Lockhart. And Lockhart's down the count of one. Lockhart down the count 0-2. He's 0-4 with a ground out today. As that one was fouled away as well. Lockhart ready for his 0-2 pitch from Justin Lucas. That one just a bit upstairs, one and two. Lockhart this season, a 200 hitter. Two hits and 12 at bat, 12 plate appearances. Two walks, so totaling two and 10. Three in a row upstairs from Lucas. And the count now full. Three and two from Justin Lucas to Owen Lockhart. That one's hit well, out towards left, backing up towards the track, making the over-the-shoulder over catch is caught by Tyler Burkotter. 
And Bird Cotter saves extra bases as Lockhart will go back to the bench. So with that fly out, Jackson Kehoe, the leadoff hitter, back at the dish. So check back to first. This will be a rundown. The throw goes to second. He is out at Let's second go, base. Go, Joey. Joey, Amadi, and Bab McNabb on the same page there. They pick off the pinch Let's runner in Joey Graziani, who pinch run for Jack Redding's walk. And just like that, there goes from a man on first and nobody out to two outs, no man on for Justin Lucas. Jackson Keogh, the 471 hitter, ready to go. With his team meeting 10 runs scored and 8 hits. Lucas delivers high in the count 1 and 1. One run from Lucas on Kehoe. It's taken for a strike. And the count one and two in favor of Lucas. Lucas ready in the one-two delivery inside. And the count evens up at two and two. Is that one nearly grazed the leg of Pio? Again, Keo, a team leader in runs with 10 scored and batting 470. Here's the delivery from Lucas to Keo, fouled off the cage and out of play. We'll see a sixth pitch in this at bat. Two outs, no man on the top of the fifth inning for the Friars. Lucas doesn't like the sign, so he'll take a step off. And then Baker and I play on the same page. <laughs> Pitch number six of the at bat from Lucas. Swing and a miss. He got no, maybe not foul ball. Just barely getting a piece of it was Jackson Keo off the end of his at off the end of the bat, and Lucas will be forced into a seven pitch battle now with Keo. Keo ready for the two two. That one in the dirt. Full count now to Jackson Kehoe from Justin Lucas. Here's a pitch from Lucas on the 3 2 fouled away. And pitch number nine is due for Kehoe. On deck is Michael Coleman, the left fielder who's walked and singled. Kehoe is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Looking to avoid a third. The ninth pitch of the at bat. Swung on, driven well. Deep left field, backing up to the track. It is gone. Jackson Kehoe, the first home run of the game, with a solo shot in the ninth pitch of a, a bat with Justin Lucas. And it's a 3 2 lead for Bonner in the fifth. That is a perfect at bat for any batter in any offense. A nine pitch battle with a reliever ending in a long ball to left. It's 
Still two outs though in the inning. Still nobody on, but now down by one of the Firebirds. That brings up Michael Coleman, the aforementioned starting left fielder with a walk and a single. He takes that one inside. Coleman again batting 412 on the year. Takes that one for a strike in the count one and one. Coleman pops that one foul off the cage. And the count one and two. As Lucas now with another pitcher's count back to back at bats. Coleman looking to go three for three, reaching base safely today. The two, the one two from Lucas has popped up right field side. Amadi calls it off. And Amadi makes the catch at first base. And the side is retired in the fifth. The damage is done with a solo home run from Jackson Keha. We go to the bottom of the fifth. The Firebirds down by one with work to do. Bottom of the fourth, Jack Redding will stay in. Number seven, the first and only relief pitcher so far for the Bonner Friars. HGP's offense will be led by Joey Amadi in this fifth inning, and Amadi takes down low for ball one. HGP looking to respond to a Jackson Kehoe solo shot in the Friars offensive half of the fifth inning. So far they have had a response in each of the last two, down two to one, scored one in the previous frame. Looking to do the same here is now it's a 2-0 count to Amadi. Or sorry, 1-1 one, one count as that one caught the inside of the zone. One on one taken low. And Jack Redding now down on the count 2-1, Amadi ahead. Amadi ready to go. He takes that one low. It's a 3 1 count. Amadi has a strikeout and a single. And as we said it before, I'll say it again the Bucks County Carrier Player of the Week has been proving that recently, leading the team in RBIs. Hoping to add one here. And it takes ball four on the inside. So Amadi draws a five pitch walk. He reaches base the easy way. And that brings up Matt Rendo. Right 
Rendo ready, swing and a miss. Rendo was 0 for 2 with a pop out and a strikeout in his two previous at bats. Both of those against Fred and Jelly. So this will be his first time seeing Jack Redding today. Redding's second delivery is flied out towards right. It'll go out of play into the parking lot and off a light pole before it got to any cars. The count 0 and 2 to Rendo. Rendo sets and fires that one high and wide. I'm sorry, Redding sets and fires to Rendo. One and two from Jack Redding. The pitch swing and foul off the Firebird dugout. So Rendo battles back, stays in it with a one two count. Amadi sits on first. He's a lone base runner. Nobody out here in this fifth inning. And Redding takes a step off the bump. Second mound visit of the game used by these Bonner Friars. They have three remaining. One and two to count to the opposing pitcher, Matt Rendo. Rendo ready and the pitch popped up over towards third. Tracking is Kieser, he makes the catch. And is out number one as Kieser makes the catch along the third base side. One out as Rendo pops out and that brings up Matt Baker, the catcher. Baker took a ball and immediately a check back for Amadio at first. Very close call, bad angle for the call for the umpire there. But Amadio is ruled safe. And the count 1 0 to Matt Baker. Baker looking for his first hit of the game. He fouls that one back. He's 1 for oh, or sorry, 0 for 1 with a strikeout or a walk in his most recent plate appearance. He was pinch run for by Farrell. Farrell wound up score wound up scoring on an RBI single by McNabb. That one taken up high and a count two and two to Matt Baker. The Firebirds is looking to have an answer in the bottom of the fifth. They trail by one. Baker takes a little inside. Ball three to count full to the catcher. A 3-2 full count to Baker. It hits him in the shoulder. And Baker eats one for the Firebirds. The Firebirds now with two men on. Baker will call for a pinch runner. And there are two men on with one out in this bottom of the fifth. And pinch running once again for the Firebirds is Farrell. Farrell on first, Amadi advances to second on the hit by pitch. And that brings up Colin Davis. Davis first pitch is lifted out towards center, tracking it and making the catch. Neither batter will tag as tracking and making the catch was Irv Fisher, the new center fielder. Two outs here in the fifth as Davis is flown out. But Davis gone, that brings up Bam McNabb. One for two with an RBI double, his last at bat and the pop out. 
And McNair ready to go with two men on. One in the scoring position might be Amadi. The other in Farrell. First pitch is taken inside. Ball one on McNair. McNair ready to go. And the count evens up at one apiece. One and one on Bam McNabb. McNabb a 267 hitter, as previously mentioned this year. Two runs scored. He earned his third RBI in his last at bat, and a chance to add to it. One and two, the count to McNabb. Redding ready to battle back once more. The one two delivery. Swung on, ground ball, up the middle. It's dying fast, dropped, bobbled. The throw to first goes wide. Farrell thought about going home, may have had a chance to, but he's just unable to pull the trigger, and so the bases are loaded with two outs here in the fifth. As McNabb reaches on an error. Matt Evans comes to the plate and 0 for 2 with a fly out and a ground out. Matt Evans. Bases are loaded with two outs for Matt Evans. The 211 hitter so far this year. Takes that one inside. Evans with eight runs scored. He leads the team. Also with four hits, only one RBI. Evans swing and a miss. One and one the count to Evans. Firebirds trail by one in the fifth. They have left them loaded earlier on. Not hoping to repeat history. The one-on-one -on -one to Evans. Fly ball out towards shallow right, dropping fast. But the catch is made by Ryan Friel. Working out of the bases loaded jam once more is Jack Redding. And the Firebirds will go to the sixth. The down by one for the fly out by Evans. 3-2 lead for Bonner to the top of the sixth we go. Justin Lucas remains on the mound for the Firebirds to begin this sixth inning with the Friars at the dish. He'll face the catcher, Quinn Bryant. Bryant ready for the first delivery from Justin Lucas. That one in the dirt. Did it catch him? It did. And 
so Brian will be hitting the foot with the first pitch. There's a man on first and nobody at that fence. Brian was 0 for 2 with a fly out and a pop out. Still on the scorecard 0 for 2, but adds an on base with a hit by a pitch in that one. Baker comes out to say a word to Lucas, but goes right back. Austin Cannon now the dish. Cannon 0 for 1 himself with a hit by a pitch and a fly out. And now faces a second pitch in the inning from Justin Lucas. Now on outside, ball one. Austin Cannon, the cleanup hitter, we have mentioned his name before, and rightfully so. A team leader in batting average, 571. Across 14 at bats, he has eight hits. The highest batting average on the team by a full 100 points over Jackson Kehoe at 471. Lucas now trying to battle back from a 2-0 count. And the pitch is fouled away. So first strike thrown in the inning by Lucas, 2-1. and one. One for Lucas, that one outside. Three one now the count. So then Keho, a team leading ten run score for the or sorry, Cannon, eight runs scored, second to Keho. Cannon into the senior season. That throw goes wide. They go over the fence, that'd be a dead ball. And a free base advancement for Quinn Bryan. Ooh, so before the throw, the batter was granted time. And so there will be no check back on the scorecard. As calling for time was Austin Cannon. So back to first goes Quinn Bryan, who advanced from a hit by a pitch. That one fouled away by Cannon. And we're at a 3 2 count. Once again, full for Justin Lucas. Two, delivers to home, line drive through the hole in left field. That'll be a base hit. Keeping it in front of him is Tyler Burkotter, and there's now two men on with nobody out in the fifth and sixth. Quinn Bryan is the second. Austin Cannon with a single, his first hit of the game. Harry Carr will come to the dish, but not before a mound visit with Justin Lucas. Carate's designated hitter hitting 231 on the season across 19 plate appearances, 13 at bats, so six walks. Three hits in those 13 at bats. Lucas, Lucas will stay in, looking to record the first out of the sixth inning with Harry Carr, who's done that twice with a ground out and a pop out. Car the DH is ready. Lucas stands alone on the bump. He'll step off. And he checks back Quinn Bryan. Nobody home at second for the throw. And so no one goes. Lucas ready to live with high, and that's a ball one to Harry Carr.
Carr ready for pitch number two. And Amadi goes up for the bunt, a bunt to third base side, and it goes foul out of play. One on one in the count now to Carr after his first strike is a bunt foul. And Luke just take a step off the mound. One on one in the count to Harry Carr. Again, Carr hitting 231 on the season. Three hits and two runs scored, over 13 at bats, whopping six walks. So good on base percentage, showing bunt again. Amadi comes up for it, it won't go his way. Third base side has bobbled in, so he's not a sacrifice, but a successful bunt for Harry Carr. And now the bases are loaded with nobody out for the Bonner Friars. We will infield single for Carr. That's being a rough sixth inning for the Firebirds on defense. With Carr off, it brings up Jackson. Or, no, pardon me, CJ Nocella. Number two to him is inside. So pinch hitting, pardon me, is Corey Sheridan. Sheridan pinch, hit, pinch hits for Ryan Friel. And Sheridan will play right. Sheridan fouls that one away. A count of one and two. Lucas looking to battle back. He's had two strikes and three at bats now in his two innings of work. Still looking for the elusive first strikeout. It would be a big one here for Sheridan. That was fouled away, towering over by the field house. And all the soft ball. One and two to Sheridan. He's hitting 200 on the year. Five at bats, only one hit, no walks. And the pitch is inside. Almost clipped the leg of Sheridan. That evens the count two and two. Sheridan with the bases loaded and nobody out has an opportunity to add to his stat sheet. And the pitch to him. Upstairs, ball three. The count now full to Sheridan. Sheridan set, and Lucas, not quite, he'll take a step off. Three and two the count to Corey Sheridan. He's coming in in right field, replacing 3L, the 3-2 full count pitch, inside ball four, and Sheridan walks home a run. Four two lead for Bonner for the RBI walk now for Corey Sheridan. Scoring is Quinn Bryan who led off the inning with a first pitch hit by pitch. Lucas winds and fires high. CJ Nocella now at the dish for these Friars. Priscilla finally breaking out of the slump that lasted the majority of the season up until today with a single and an RBI in his last half bat. He's now one for 14. A pitch to Lucas, or from Lucas to, to Nocella is inside. One and one the count. Bases loaded, nobody out still for the Friars. Nocella takes upstairs, two and one. And 
Pass puts a little bit too inside. That catches no Sella. And back to back walks and now hit by pitch to score runs. 5 2 Bonner leads is no Sella. Eats one for the RBI. And that will spur another mound visit for Lucas. And he'll sub off. 5 2 Bonner lead for a rough six inning. And the bases are loaded with nobody out still for the Firebirds pitching staff. Let's see who they put in. Bases are loaded with nobody out on the top of the six for the Friars offense. They've already capitalized twice to go up 5-2, bringing about a pitching change as Justin Lucas comes off in favor of Dalton Didek, number 28. First pitch from Didek is lined to left field. That's a base hit. One run will score. That'll be all as Didek allows an RBI. Jack Redding, the first RBI of the game for him. And Redding, who walks his first time up in relief of the starting pitcher, Nick Frangelli, with a single there. Six to two, Bonner now leads. And Redding will be pinch run for by Joey Graziani. Second pitch now from Didek is also swung on, popped up foul territory in left, and a little bit into the stands. Too far to get to for Jake Keezer, who came from short. 0-1 now the count to Irv Fisher, the second pitch hitter, or pinch hitter, pardon me, for the Friars. He's 0-1 with a fly out, replacing Owen Lockhart, who's 0-1 with a ground out. Fisher awaits the delivery from Didek. That one's low. Took a hop before it got to the plate. Got away a little bit from Baker, but no one advances. Didek ready to deliver the 1-1. One, one. Side two and one. Got 
Bendek ready to go for the 2-1 pitch. That one inside. And Eric Fisher now makes it 2-2. So Fisher 0 for 1 in his career. Or sorry, 0 for 1 this season. Batting, the senior. Only one plate appearance. He has a run scored on a hit by pitch. And now looking to add to that with a 3-2 count. One pitch away from getting his first RBI of the season. Fisher ready for the 3-2 from Dideck. That one just a bit inside, ball four. And this game starting to fly away from the Firebirds a little bit too fast. It's seven to two. That's another one, another run walks home. With Fisher's walk, it brings up the top of the order and Jackson Kehoe. It does not get e much easier from here on out. Kehoe takes a strike. And the senior batting 471. A little bit surprised with the call. Oh, on the count as Bonner now leads 7 to 2 after the walk home. Dydek delivers. That one inside, ball one. Dideck, that's a line drive out towards left field. That's down for a base hit. One run is in. Here comes two. Flying around second and digging home for third is Sheridan, and Sheridan will score. Base is clearing double. For Jackson Kehoe coming off the home run in his last at bat. He gets that one down the left field line and it's a 10 to 2 Bonner lead and a seven runs sixth inning. Four total RBIs on the day for Kehoe. His home run was a solo shot earlier. And the Friars have now batted around in the inning. As Michael Coleman will be the nine hitter. Coleman takes down low, one and one count. A walk, a single, and a fly out for Coleman today. Still nobody out in the top of the sixth for the HGP defense. That next delivery is a called strike one and two. Dynamic sets and deals the 0-2. It's a line drive out towards center. That's a base hit. Holding up at third will be Irv Fisher. And Fisher puts men on the corners. And for the single now by Michael Coleman. Coleman improves to two for three on the day. A walk, two singles, and a fly out. Now the tenth batter in the inning will be the catcher, Quinn Bryant. Some activity in the Firebird bullpen behind the play as Dideck hasn't had the easiest of things here in his share of the sixth inning. Men on the corners, nobody out in this seven run affair. 10 to two the score overall in favor of Bonner. Oh, one the count, that one swung on and missed as well by Brian. Brian began the onslaught with a hit by pitch in the first pitch of the inning. That was when Justin Lucas was on the mound. Ready to go once more. 
Didek ready for the 0-2. Swung on, hit well, out towards center. Tracking it and making the catch will be Rosado. Tagging up from third and scoring is Irv Fisher. And it's an RBI, or sack fly RBI for Quinn Bryan. He has run an RBI in the inning, and it's now an 11-2 Bonner lead. So the Firebirds finally record their first out of the sixth inning, but they allow their eighth run of said frame. Man on first and one out for Didek. That one down low. And it'll skid away as Austin Cannon now back at the dish. Cannon singled before in this inning. He has a fly out, hit by a pitch, and single on the day. And somehow an off day for Cannon, his one and two, one for two performance today with a 571 batting average. And that one gets away. Getting away from Baker was a throw by Didek, and so advancing to second is Michael Coleman, who had sat on first for the last at bat. Yet another man in scoring position for the Friars on offense in the sixth. Didek swung on, line drive towards center. Rosado tracking it, doesn't have to move much. He will make the catch. A line drive through to third. It is in time. Rosado on no hops to third to pick off Michael Coleman. And a rough inning defensively. A great play to end the frame after an eight run inning for Bonner. 11 2 the Friars lead, but Rosado with an amazing play, making all three outs himself in the frame. We go to the bottom of the sixth. We need a miracle. In the bottom of the sixth inning, 11 to 2, the Bonner Friars lead led by an eight run sixth in the previous frame. And that pitch signifying how the game has gone so far as Keezer fouls one down the line and off a coach's head. Keezer has reached base all three times he stepped to the plate. A hit by pitch, single, and a double is how he's done it. And to add something else to that list as he will line that one out towards center but caught and one out here in the sixth 
Catch was made by Irv Fisher, who tracked it in the outfield. And that brings up Tyler Burkotter with a ground out single and fielder's choice as that's time off. Fish to Burkotter is taken down low for strike one. 0 on the count. Jack Redding remains in the game. He has gotten into trouble the last two innings, but only allowed one total run. So he's rewarded with another inning of work. That one flying up to center again. And again, making the catch is Irv Fisher. Two quick outs as, Eddie Re as Tyler Burkhotter flies out. And that brings up Eddie Rosado, the number three hitter. Rosado playing in center field today. Grounds that one over to short, fielded cleanly, and over to first in time for the out. A four pitch bottom of the sixth for Jack Redding. And he has been, he was immaculate in that inning, has been solid overall. And we go right back to the break, hitting the top of the seventh. It's a nine run lead for Bonner, 11 to two. Six innings down, one more to come from Holy Ghost Prep. Bonner looking to extend off a eight run, six inning frame. They now lead by nine, 11 to two. Now their offense is back at the dish. Austin Cannon flew out into a double play his last time up. So that brings up Harry Carr. Carr one for three with a ground out, pop out, and a single his last time up. That one fouled away. New pitcher for HGP. We'll get to that in a moment. The new pitcher for HGP being Killian McHugh. McHugh, the sophomore, comes in. Still facing Carr, who's now down on the count 0 2. And now the first ball thrown in the inning by McHugh. It's 1 and 2 as Carr takes down left.
Car ready for the 1-2 delivery. No run on, nobody out. Car leading off about top of the 7th. Delivery from McHugh inside catches, McC catches Car. And so that will be a leadoff hit by Pitch for the second consecutive inning. There have been an immense amount of hit by pitches today. Seven total across both teams. Four Friars getting plunked and three Firebirds. And Carr now reaches base for second time today. Corey Sheridan, the pinch hitter, now steps to the plate. He is an RBI. Had an RBI walk in the last inning. That started the bleeding for the Firebird defense, which seems to be continuing into the seventh. That RBI walked the only at bat so far for Sheridan, not including this one, and he's down the count 0-1, the second opportunity. McHugh delivers, that one's waved on, and count 0-2. McHugh ready for the 0-2, that one drops in the zone for strike three. Had a little visual interference there, but McHugh gets his first strikeout. That is the first strikeout for any reliever on HGP today, as Lucas and Didek both went over. Rendo had two as the starter, McHugh with one as the relief. And there is now one out with a man on first for the Bonner Friars offense. After Sheridan, it's C.J. Nosella has had himself a decent day. One for two with a single strikeout and a hit by pitch his last time up. He went up scoring a run. That was on the bases clearing double by Jackson Kehoe. Oh, one the count for Nosella to start. Billy McHugh takes a step off the, takes a step off the bump. And McHugh ready for the second pitch of the at-bat. That one swung on and missed. Oh, and two now the count. McHugh looking to battle with Nocella. Again, Nocella's first hit of the season coming in this game as that pitch gets away from Baker. And stealing second easily will be Harry Carr. So Carr reaches second safely. The count one and two to CJ Nocella. Nocella one for 15 on the season. He does have two runs scored though on two walks. Pitch that one chops back towards the mound, gets by McHugh, fielded almost cleanly, but in and out of the glove of the third baseman, Colin Davis. And so reaching base for the third time today is CJ Nocella. This time reaching on an error. First and second, one out. Pinch hitting again, Joey Graziani. Graziani comes in for Nocella. Second baseman goes back to the dugout. Staying in the game is McHugh with a one man on first and second and one out. He now faces Jack Redding, the pitcher who has a walk and a single, as well as an RBI on his last single. Reading, check swing, not go, but it's called strike. McHugh ready to go with Redding. Redding got his first RBI of the season in his last at-bat, only his second hit. He's now two for six on the year to improve his batting average to 333. 
Reading ready, takes outside. And they count one and one. Reading waits the, awaits the one one from Killian McHugh. Now one in the dirt, off the pads of Baker. But no runner advancement. Ready for the 2 1. Redding has one run scored so far this season. The pitch to him, swing and a miss. Two and two, now they count to Jack Redding. First and second, one out for Bonner. McHugh checks back to second, throws home. That one's ground ball over towards short. Good to clean it by Keezer to McNabb to Amadi in time. A satisfying 6-4-3 to get out of the inning for the Firebirds. They do not allow a run in the top of the seventh, but they trail by nine to the bottom half of the inning. Do the Firebirds have some magic in this Bonner Ghost 3 rematch? We get to the bottom of the seventh inning here at Holy Ghost Prep. The Firebirds trail by nine, 11 to two to the Bonner Friars. Who have led for the vast majority of this game. There is a new pitcher though for the Friars to try to close out HGP in this second rematch. That pitch, pitcher 
being number two, Michael Kowalski. So Kowalski ready on the mound. He faces Joey Amati. Kowalski a 2-0 count to Amati. That one taken inside as well. Now Amadi will await a 3-0 delivery. He's one for two with a walk, strikeout, and single. That one's chopped over towards second. Fielded cleanly, the throw goes to first quickly. It's in time. And CJ Nocella makes the play on defense. Bottom of the seventh as the Firebirds clean up. Hitter is down swinging. At bat number two of the inning will be Matt Rendo, the starting pitcher. Rendo takes low for ball one. Rendo now ready again. And a quick 2 0 count to him. HTP has pulled off some late runs. I've not been able to have a full on comeback yet in a later inning, but they have threatened late. So far, one out, no men on as Brett Doe waves in the ball. Delivery from Klawanski. Check swing, and that's strike three. Cuts the bottom of the zone. Fiber is down looking, and they're down to their final out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Two outs, no men on, and it brings up the catcher, Matt Baker. Baker's first pitch, line drive out towards right center. Dropping and diving catch made. Bobbled, but now nah, that was playing around. Catch is made out in center field. And that will do it as Irv Fisher makes the game ceiling catch. Fisher had an RBI on a walk earlier. And one of many Friars to say they did that as the Friars beat the Firebirds 11-2 in seven innings of work here at Holy Ghost Prep. Your MVP of the game is the leadoff hitter Jackson Kehoe, the third baseman for the Bonner Friars. Three, four total RBIs, three on a bases clearing double, which put the Bonner Friars out of reach in the sixth inning, going from 5-2 to 8-2. To they also had a solo home run, the only long ball of the game, rebounding after two strikeouts to start the game, but four RBI in the dying innings and his final two at-bats as a brilliant recovery for him and a dominant win for the Bonner Friars. HGP now falls to 3-5 and five on the road. They are currently riding a four-game losing streak, while Bonner feeling the high on a five-game win streak with back-to-back -back dominating wins, scoring double-digit runs in three games in a row. The Holy Ghost Prep, I'm Caden Stewart signing off on the Holy Ghost Prep YouTube channel. You're getting your final score, the Bonner Friars 11, Holy Ghost Prep Firebirds 2. Although there is one positive note, be sure to make sure, be sure to note that this is not the only stream that you have this week. We've been on a bit of a stream drought, the last Firebird baseball stream coming the first week of April. But we have HGP at versus Ryan, Thursday, April 18th at 4 o'clock, right here at the Doom Athletic Complex and right here on the Holy Ghost Prep YouTube Network. We'll see you then. For now, I'm Caden Stewart signing off. Holy Ghost is on the move. Yeah, Firebirds had a lot of momentum. Right from the jump for the Firebirds, it looked really good.